Let me share the screen first. Then you can start uh, recording, inshallah. Yes, I am. Bayasi, <laughs> اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. So, Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us this opportunity to come back together as a group and learn. So, first of all, before we start, we have to know the intention that what is the intention? We are all here together. For the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we will learn together just for his pleasure. So, may we please for that. Making dua, like we will make dua as we are starting this journey now, and we'll continue making dua for the ease of this journey. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate the journey and may Allah make me able to deliver properly. Okay, so first thing we will keep in mind that most of the sisters we have are Bayana students. So we will use the Bayana terminology so that the class is easier and the class caters everyone. Uh, for each topic, each terminology, there is a classical wording or the classical terminology as well. If someone really wants to ask a classical terminology, either you can ask at the end of the class or you can ask um, in the group. So I will answer in the group. We will have a um, continuous uh, like conversation and chatting in the group, whatever you need to ask. Someone mic is still on, so that creates disturbance. Please mute all mics. Please mute all mics. So, Sadan Shama, you have mic open. I am trying to do it. Where will it be? I will see. Okay, so um, let us start the introduction. First of all, uh, before we get into Alajromia, we uh, have to understand that. Uh, Arabic language is divided into different branches. So, al ajrumia the text is related to the uh, language of or the study of Arabic language, which is called Ilman Nahab. So, what is Ilman Nahab? Oh, we have been hearing about Ilman Nahab and Il Mustarf and Il Mulbalaga, but actually, what it is, grammarian has given different definitions, but obviously, the definitions are difficult just to put it in simple words. Uh, Nahab is a, a study of the word that is, we all know the ism, the fi'al, and the harf, and the role it plays in the speech or the role that it plays in the sentence. And how we determine its role, the role is determined looking at the ending of the word, whether the word is morab or whether the word is mabni. The morab and mabni detail we'll get into a later. Uh, what is morab and what is mabni? But just for now, we need to understand that. Nahab deals with a word and the role that word plays in the sentence or in the bigger picture. So I hope that everyone understands what Ilma Nahab is. Okay, so why is it that we are studying it? Uh, the grammarian given it the reason for studying Ilma Nahab is to be 
able to avoid the mistake while speaking and writing Arabic. But for us, why we are here and why we are learning this text together, because we want to be able to understand the Quran and the Hadith better, inshallah. Okay, so a little background about how the Inman Nahav started. The history of Inman Nahav is extremely um, old, like at the caliphate, during the caliphate of Hazrat Ali, what happened that lots of new land uh, was captured and people were entering Islam. So most of the people who were entering Islam, they were non-Arab. Hence, they did not know the language. And when these people were entering Islam, due to their influence, the language, the Arabic language, was also changing. So hence, Hazrat Ali, he thought that there was a need to make standard rules for the language so that it is easy for the non-Arabs to understand it and not to change it too much. So hence, he requested a person named Abu Aswad Adori. And on the request of Hazrat Ali, he has this study of Iman Nahav. Uh, so this was a brief introduction. And then let's get into al -Jumia. So what is al -Jumia? Everyone, I suppose, has a uh, person named Abu Abdullah Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Daud as San Haji. So this person, um, he was Al-Maruf, um, he was commonly known as al ajru And hence, based on his kunyat al ajru the name in the 7th century of the Hijri calendar, means in 678 Hijri sometimes, then this text was written. So this is extremely old as a standard text for someone who wants to start learning Arabic. So most of the people in different countries, especially the Arab countries and uh, proper teaching of uh, the Arabic, what they do is they give the students this matan and the students have to memorize it. And then they get, I'm not going to memorize it, so we will just uh, try to understand as much as we can, inshallah. Okay, so most of us, all of us who are here, we have already done, um, have done it from the Bayana and some of us have further moved to Kutu, and we have some students from Quran Academy as well, so we have done it in one way. But what happened when we, when we study um, different texts, obviously the same things from different angles, and hence we are able to understand uh, the thing better. So this is same Arabic from a different angle, and we hope that this will improve the, our understanding of Arabic language. And how so you can use your printout, or you can use your books, and if you want to take notes, call al-Musannif, the Musannif said, Rahimullah, may Allah have mercy on, on him. Al-Kalamu huwa, the speech is, so a word is, al murakkab is ordered, al mufidu beneficial, bil wazi, in the placement. So the word is placement, and then what happens? And its types are three, like the types of alun, baharun, ja alimani. Ja alimani is related to harful, means it adds up to the meaning. Uh, sorry? Uh, you are not audible enough to me. Is it better now? A little better. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the rest of the sisters? Can you all hear me? Just a Asalaamu Alaikum. Sister, your voice is clear for, for me anyway. Okay, Alhamdulillah. But I think Sister Zain is recording, so be uh, clear. Okay, I'll try to continue and um, hope that the voice is clear enough. Okay, Bismillah. فَالْإِسْمُ يَعْرَفُ بِالْقَفِّ وَالْتَنْبِينِ وَالْدَخُولُ الْأَلِفَ مِنْ وَإِلَى وَعَنْ وَعَلَى وَفِي وَرُبَّ وَبَا وَقَاهُ وَلَعْمُ وَحَرْفُ الْقَسْمُ Do the mean trap. Ism, the ism is, is known. How do we recognize an ism? We know, recognize an ism. So we recognize an ism by the it. What can be? In the start. Um, the and with the entrance of Alif Lam, so we know that it has to be an ism. And with and what are they? Wahya and they are min We know all of these words min ila an ala e rupa that is mostly used in the Arabic poetry. Wabao wakafu walamu and the and the proof of qasam wahya and those proof of qasam are Bow, bow, the recognition of that the word. 
So I'll repeat it one more time that the recognition of ism is what? Or it will have a tanzeen at the end of it, or it will have the alif lam before the word is end. Walfiyalu yarafu liqbal wasim wasawfa wasai tani asatina. Okay, and the recognition with the qal, the seen, the sofa, and the taitani is the satina. So qal, we know that if the qal, the seen, and the sofa is coming um, before the word, the word has to be a fair. And then what is taitani is satina? The taitani is satina is the, uh, the silent star. As the son of Sadaf Sena used to say. And that is also the recognition of a fair. Like the Rabbat. So the silent ta in the end, or the ta with the sukoon in the end, is the recognition that the word is a fair. And then what is the recognition of the khal? Well, Harfu Mala, yes, yes, Lah, Mahu, the little Isni, when I believe it here. And for the Harf, it is um, upon it does not accept with it any indication of the ism nor any indication of the fear. I mean, what does it mean that whatever the indication or whatever the recognition in signs of the ism and the fear we have already done? These indications will not be there in the harp. So the harp doesn't have any indication of an ism, and it doesn't even have any indication of a fear. That's what it is. So basically, it doesn't have any recognition or identification of its own. So if someone had to ask a question, so far you can ask. And then we we'll move on to the next one. The chapter of Al Ayah. Samia, would you please repeat the last part again? You're saying about the harf, Sister Rahat? Yeah, the last part, yeah, harf one, yeah. Okay, so it's saying that for a harf, it doesn't really have any indication of its own. The harf, um, like whatever the indications we have studied about the ism and the indications about the fi'il, all those recognitions or indications will not be there in the harf. So basically, the harf doesn't have any indication of its own, but we say that it doesn't have the indication of the ism and it doesn't have the indication of the fear. Is it clear now? Yes, I was confused on the word yes, luhu. So that means indication? Doesn't accept. It means to accept. Al-harfu ma la yes lahu ma'ahu ad-dalilu. The harf is whatever does not accept with it ad-dalilu indication Dalilul ismi indication of the ism, wala dalilul fail, nor the indication of the fail. Okay, got it. Thank you, Jazakallah. Okay. okay. So, the next thing we'll do is Babul uh, Era. Um, so, okay, so Babul Era, the chapter of the recognition of the Arab, how, what is Arab and how to recognize the Arab. So what is Arab? Uh, the writer says, Al-Arabu huwa taghiru al-awakir al-kalim. The Arab is the changing at the end of the word. So whatever changes we see at the end of the word, basically that, uh, that is called Arab. Um, okay, and then he continues saying, and why does that change come? What is the reason for the change? It comes because of the different 
agents that enters upon it. The ikhtilaf al awamil dafila fi alayha. So different agents when they they enter upon the world. So because of those agents or those awamil, the singular is amil and the plural is awamil. So because of that, what happens that um, this word will change and the changing we will see at the end of it. What kind of changes are there? Lafzan aw taqbiran. So either the changes are going to be lafzan, meaning you will see them, you will be able to observe it in words. Aw taqbiran or they are going to be implied. We won't be able to see them, but we know that these uh, changes are there. We can understand the changes are there. I'll give the example of that. Okay, so this is what it is saying in English, like, Arab is the changing of the end of the word due to the, the external agents acting upon it. So why is the ending changing? Ending is changing because of the different agents that act upon it. And then either the changes are going to be, the changes on the word will be either apparent or the changes of the word will be implied. So, so we can say that there are two types of Arab. The first type of Arab is the Arabi Lavzi, the apparent Arab. And the example I have given, Ja Zaidun, Ra'aytu Zaidan, and Mara'atu Bi Zaidin. So Zaid is the same word, but we see that it is changing. The ending is changing. The two Dhammas, the two Fathas, and the two Kasras. Why is it changing? It is changing because of the agent that is entering upon it. So the agent is making mm, changes on the word Zaid. So Zaid is the, the word which is accepting different Arabs. And then what are the Awamin? What are the agents that are uh, the cause of the change of the Arab? Let me try to use it a little bit bigger. Okay, yes. So the first Amil Ja Zaidun. So Ja'a is the agent, is the fi'il, and Zaidun is the fa'il. So it has acted upon Zaid and has given it the, the two Dhammas or the Rafa status. Ra'aytu Zaidan again, Ra'aytu, I saw Zaid. So because this is the Mafule Bihi for Ra'aytu, hence this is in the Nasab status. And Maratu bi Zaidin, I went with Zaid. So because um, it is coming after the Harfe Jarba, hence it is in the Jal status. So when we can apparently see the change in the Arab, that is the Arab in love. And when we don't see the change, but we know the change is there, means that the change or the Arab is implied, then that is called the Arab in Taqdiri, that is Ja'a Musa, Ra'aytu Musa, and Marar to be Musa. So Musa actually remains Musa. It's not changing. We don't see any apparent change on the word Musa. But we know that Ja a Musa, this first sentence Musa has taken the place of a doer. So first sentence Musa is in the Rafa status. So it being in the Rafa status is the Arabic Taqdiri. Ra'aytu Musa. I saw Musa. Now again, Musa, we don't see any apparent change on the word. But because this is a mafule bihi, so we know that the second sentence, Musa has taken the place of mafule bihi, hence it is in the nasab status. And the third sentence, marar to be Musa. Again, Musa, we don't see any change on the word. But we know that because it is coming after the harfe jarba, has to be in the jar status. So in the third sentence, Musa is in the jar status. Is this much clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. So if anyone has to <coughs> ask a question, you may ask. Otherwise, we'll move on. Um, the types of Arab we do. We know that there are, uh, what are the different types of Arab? Mostly what happens that oh, we have done the Arab and we, the concept we have is, okay, Arab is only for ism. But that is not true. The Arab is for the ism as well as the Arab is also for the, the present tense. So there are altogether four types of Arab. Either the Arab can be Rafa, can be Nasab, it can be Jar, or it can be Jazam. These are the four types of Arab. Let us read for, uh, from the text and language. 
step into such a relation. So, <coughs> the writer says, <coughs> and its types are four, means the types of Arab are four. Rafun, Wanazbun, Waqafun, Wajazmun. The Rafa, the Nasaf, the Qaf, we say that this is Jar. The Jar and the Jazm. So these are the four types of Arab. Falil Asma Imin Zalik. And for the Ism <coughs> among these, or from these means from the four different Arab. For the ism are what? Arafu, Wanasbu, Waqaftu, Wala Jazma Fiha. So for the ism is the Rafa status, the Nasab status, the Jar status, Wala Jazma Fiha Jazma. The meme has a fatha. What does it indicate that this is line of agents <coughs> or categorical negation? There's absolutely no jazm in it. Means there's absolutely no jazm for an ism. So for the ism, there are only three status. Either the ism can be in the rafa status, the nasab status, or the jazm status, and it can never ever be in the jazm status. Walil al min zalik, and for the fi'al, the al what happens from among these means out of the four status. We have a rafu, wanazbu, wajazmu, wala qaf dafiha. So for the fi'il, we have the rafa status, the nasab status, the jazm status, wala qaf da, again the, the qaf da. Um, it has a fatha on it and no alif lam, so it, it is the categorical negation, or this is the line of agent. Absolutely no jar for a fi'il. Or we'll see some examples to understand it better. Okay. So what we we said that ism can be in the rafa status Muslimun, in the nasab status Musliman, or in the jar status that is Muslimin, and there is no jazm for an ism. When we look at a fail, the three status it will have either it will be marfu in the rafa status, yaalamu, the damma yaalamu. It is in the Rafa status. In the Nasab status is Ya'lama. There is no Jar for a fi'al, and the Jazm will be Ya'lam. So I think this is basic and everyone must have understood so far. Now we'll continue with the next heading. Okay. So how to recognize the Arab? The Babul the chapter on the recognition of the sign of an Arab. So what are the signs? Generally, what is the concept? The general concept we have that, okay, uh, the Dhamma or the, uh, the page is a sign for Rafa. Then we say that um, for um, the Nasab, this is Patha. And for the Jar is the kasra, but there are other signs. These are the basic signs for it, but other than that, there are other signs as well. Mm, we'll see what they are. Okay. Le rafi arbao alamatin. For the rafa, there are four signs. The first they are saying adamatu, wa wawu, wa alifu, wa nunu. So there are four signs. The damma we said. Everyone knows Dhamma is the sign for Rafa. Then other than Dhamma, the three signs are Vau, the Alif, and the Noon. Hmm. Okay. فَأَمَّا الدَّمَّةُ فَتَّكُونَ عَلَامَةَ الرَّفْعِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ الْمَوَازِعِ As for the Dhamma, for it, عَلَامَةُ لِلْرَفْعِ the the indication of it being in Rafa are at four places. Wafi Ismail Mufrid, Wajama al Taksir, Wajama Mwanas al Salim, Wafir al Muzari al Ladi Lam Yad Tasil Bil Akhirati Shay. Okay, so four places we will see that the alamat or the sign of Rafa is what? It is Dhamma, where the first thing they are saying that it is the 
it is found in the ism al mufti means a singular ism the singular ism then jamat taksi means the broken plural so example i have given kutubun singularism the example i gave is qalamun then the broken plural is kutubun wa jamai muannas as-salim and the sound feminine plural muslimatun and the fourth thing is al fil al mudhari alladhi lam yattasil bil akhirati shay'in the fil al mudhari the present tense at the end of which nothing is attached so um, at the end of the present tense where nothing is attached means the last letter of it is the root letter itself so these are these four uh, the four words or the four siqas and they are what tasribu yasribu tasribu azribu and nazribu is the fourth point clear to everyone what is the meaning of what is the meaning of al fil al mudhari alladhi lam yattasil bil akhirati shay'in i if you can unmute the mic and quickly say that would be easier for me rather than looking at the mic uh, can you repeat the last point please <laughs> yes this is what i was asking okay, okay. okay. so <laughs> when we say al fil al mudhari alladhi lam yattasil bil akhirati shay'in it means that the present tense at the end of which nothing is attached when we say nothing is attached at the end of the present tense means that the last word of the present so we see that the end of it nothing is attached the word is ending at the root letter itself okay so the, if we move on to the rest of the sigas in the in the uh, present tense chart like and we say yazribani or yazribuna or tazribani or tazribina so after the ba we see that something is being attached what that is okay the root now but something is being attached after the root letter but in these four siqas in these four particular words what is happening that nothing is attached the last letter the last letter is the root letter itself clear to all yes alhamdulillah Okay, so these were the four. Um, okay. So next thing we said is the vow. Mm. Okay. So am al vow fa takunu alamatu lirafi fi mau mau zain means vow is the sign of rafa. at two places or at two cases fi jamal muzakkar as salim wa fi asma al khamsa so at two places we will see that the sign of rafa is wow so what are those two cases the first of it is the sound masculine plural muslimuna so muslimuna the noon can be dropped we know when it comes in the mudaf mustaf ila combination or when it comes as an idafa so this noon will drop so noon doesn't indicate anything but the wow remains in all cases hence the wow indicates that muslimuna is in the rafa status then the second thing is that the asmaul khamsa was that is the five Amen. special isms and these five special isms are abu ahu hamu hu and ju so each time these isms are used in the muzaf muzaf ila combination they always will take a vowel and to indicate that they are in the rafa status like abuka your father akhuka your brother hamuki it has to be hamuki it can't be hamuka means your in laws the in laws of a female are called hamu then fuki means your mouth and zumar the possessor of wealth next is 
the signs of rafa is alif only in one case which is the dual ism and that is what muslimani if we look into the um, we'll be from there we'll read from this yes wa amma al alifu fa takunu alamati li rafi fi tasmiyata asma al khasa so as for the alif it is the sign of rafa fi tasmiyat al asma'i in the dual of ism khasatan only khasatan means only so the example i gave you is what the example like muslimani okay and then the last thing is wa amma al noon fatakunu alamata li rafi fi fi'l al mudhari idha yattasil bihi dhamiru al tasmiya aw dhamiru al jama aw dhamiru al muannas muannasatil muqatiba okay so the noon is the sign of rafa for the fi'l al mudhari when what is attached to it attached to it is the zamira tasmiya the pair okay i'll give you the examples and then it it will be clearer inshallah so the the zamir of the pair is attached to it or what is attached to it aw zamir ul jama the zamir of the jama is attached to it or the zamir muannasat al muqatiba or the zamir of the link second person yeah email is attached to it my work on channel like that thing i will explain what it is okay ek bar bhi kuch so when we say yes sister farzana who no sister saw that your mic is on okay so the pair tanzribani this alif and yazribani so the alif here in this pair they call it the zamiru tasmiya so this is attached and when where is it attached ba we said ba was the last two letter and after that this zamir is of the dual of the or the zamir of the pair is attached so hence the name is the indication that it is in the rafa's pattern then aw zamir ul jama what is the zamir of jama the zamir of jama is waw and the example i gave you is yazribuna and tazribuna so the waw of the yazribuna and the uh, sorry the noon of the um, this uh, yazribuna and tazribuna the noon will indicate that this is in the rafa status and the waw is what the waw is the zamir of jama so the waw indicates that this the word is in the the plural and the last thing is aw zamirul muannasatil muqatiba or the and the zamir or the pronoun of the second person feminine so that's tazribina the ya is the pronoun of the second person a feminine mm. and after it is the noon so this noon indicates that tazribina is in the nasab status so whenever we are going to refer to these five words these five uh, fi'il we call them afal khamsa what are the afal khamsa i'll repeat the afal khamsa whenever we refer to them we will we will mean yazribani tazribani yazribuna tazribuna and tazribina okay so we have covered the afal khamsa which are these we just repeated and we have done the asma'i khamsa which are abu akhu amu hu and zu so just these two terminologies you should remember that will make life easier is this this thing clear to everyone yes okay <coughs> so we we'll continue with the explanation we we'll do
Uh, I think the time is up for us. We'll take a break and then we'll continue after the Maghrib break. We'll continue after 15 minutes, inshallah.